yellow. And welcome to this tutorial where I will guide you through the process of creating this painted metal material with gratis and some wear and tear as you see here. What we're going to create exactly is this material graph and while it might seem a bit daunting or overwhelming at first sight, I hope that when we go through it uh, one note after the other that it will make way more sense to you. Let's go straight into it. Alright, so I stripped away everything essential from the graph so we can recreate it and I'm left with just the metal material and the paint material. The metal material is uh, a measured aluminum preset and I have set the roughness to 0.1. This uh, doesn't matter too much because we're only going to see very little of it. So we don't need a lot of detail in this material. The paint material is uh, the paint type and I have set a yellow color and I have added in this map in the roughness channel to give some, uh, some subtle dirt effect. So if I hit C on the keyboard while having this paint selected, we will see this paint material on the model. And you can see we have some small areas here and here that give the illusion of some dirt. And if we disable the uh, bump map, it will be way more clear. So that's what, uh, what that's, that is doing. And we have this bump map giving this, uh, yeah, <laughs> this bump surface to the material. So that's what the paint material consists of. First step is to add this paint material on top of the metal material. And to do that, I drag the output from the paint material into this plus sign. Let me just zoom in a bit so you better can see. All right, so I take the output into the plus sign and it gets applied as a label. So now we have this paint material on top of the metal material. What is left is to create an opacity map that uh, tells uh, Keyshot where to show the metal through. And um, we're going to use uh, a few different maps and a few different nodes to combine a few things. And um, the first thing we want to do is to add in a curvature node. So uh, right click, go to textures and go to the curvature. This is a, a node that detects where the model is curving. And we want the metal to show through on these edges here. So I want on all the positive edges, so I'm going to make those black and everything else I'm going to change to white. Then I will uncheck this radius in pixels. I find it easier to control. Also, if you have this uh, radius in pixels, let's just say, say five pixels, you might experience that the um, yeah so you might experience that it changes depending on how far or how close you are to the object and by unchecking this radius in pixels uh, we'll make sure that it's the same no matter how far or how close you are to the object so i uncheck that set the radius to uh, 10 millimeters maybe could be eight and i'll take this cut off drag it up a bit and end with something like this. We can always go back uh, later and tweak it. If we take this curvature and drag it directly into the opacity, we can see that we get the metal to show through, get some clean cutoffs, cutoffs. Um, but what we want is to add in these scratches as well so it doesn't look too artificial. And to uh, do that, I add in a texture from the texture library, hit M on the keyboard to show the materials if, uh, if you haven't done that already. Go to the texture tab and search for metal texture. Keyshot comes with this uh, texture here called metal texture that works uh, very good for creating these scratches. So I take it and drag it over to my graph. Close down this uh, library again. And to combine these two, the, the curvature map and this uh, texture map, which I, by the way, want to uh, adjust the scale of. To combine these two, I right click and add in a composite node. Okay, so I take the curvature as the source and then I use uh, this texture map as the alpha for this source. 
So if we select the color composite and hit C on the keyboard, we can see what we get. And um, by dragging this to the opacity channel and hitting C on the keyboard again, we can see that we get some scratches, but it's a bit, uh, yeah, it's a bit blurred and everything. It's not too clear these scratches. So to make up for that, I'm right clicking on this uh, connection between between the texture map and the source alpha and go to utilities and add in a color to number. You can use this color to number node to um, adjust the uh, the brightness and the contrast of this uh, map. Um, so we will make these scratches more clear. And to make the dark parts of the texture darker, I take this input from and drag to the right. And to make the bright parts even brighter, I take uh, the input to and drag it up as well, or to the left. And try and hit C on the keyboard to see what it looks like. And you can see it looks already way better. If I hit C on this curvature map, uh, we might have some grayscaling going on here because um, it's also a positive curvature like this. Uh, just it's it's way bigger, so it might it won't get black, but there might be some grayscaling going on. And to make sure there is none of that, I right click on this connection, go to utilities, and add in a color to number again. Double click on that, and while hitting C on the keyboard to see the the raw color information, I'm going to take this input to and drag it to the left to make sure that uh, it gets pure white. And this uh, should do. So I hit C on the keyboard again to exit out of that. What you can do now uh, is to uh, adjust a few things. Could be the size of this texture map. Um, to, uh, to make the, the scratches look as you wish. Um, and it could also be to adjust the color to number to make fewer scratches or even more scratches. And I think that this, this looks quite nice. All right, so right now it doesn't seem like uh, this paint is on top of the metal. Uh, it's just flat. So to make up for that, I can take this uh, texture map and use as a bump map for the paint as well. And to add that to the bump map, along with this um, noise texture, I'm going to right click this connection, go to utilities and select the bump add. Oops, everything uh, jumps a bit, bit around when you do that, but... Uh, if we just separate things again like this, we can now take the output from the metal texture and drag into bump number two. And you see that we get these uh, this paint to raise from the surface, but everything, uh, all the scratches is raised as well in the wrong direction actually. So uh, if we double click on the texture here, go to the bump height and type in negative 0.1 or negative 0.2, Oops, negative 0.2. We will get this subtle effect instead. Um, we can't get rid of all these uh, the scratches in here because the best thing would be to uh, be able to, um, to take this color composite and drag to the bump, but we can't do that. We only can drag uh, raw textures, so to speak, into the bump, so we have to deal with the scratches here, but I think it looks quite good anyways. So let's keep that. Next step is to add in some scratches uh, randomly spread around the surface here, so it's not totally clean here and then rough in here. Um, and to do that, I'm going to add in another color composite, uh, duplicate this one, and take this color composite and use as the source. And I will make a copy of this metal texture. Right click and duplicate, like this. and add in as the uh, background. And I will adjust this one uh, to start with, and I double click on it and hit C on the keyboard to see the raw color information. And I wanna adjust this sizing. But 
be aware that this uh, sync is selected. So if I start to uh, adjust the size here, it will also adjust the size of the texture map here. Uh, I don't want that, so I make sure to unsync it, and then I can make these scratches bigger. And I think this looks good. And like before, I want to add um, this color to number note to uh, be able to adjust. Whoa. To be able to adjust the brightness and contrast of the map. I want it to be almost pure black and white. Could be like this. Um, and I try to make it uh, even blacker because I don't want to have too many of these scratches. So I believe that something like this could work. And then go to the color composite, double click on it. And uh, we now want to combine what we see here with what we see here. And um, the first thing we need to do is to invert this map. So we could add in a invert node, or we can also take this output from to one and output two to uh, zero. And that will invert everything as well. And now here in the color composite, we can uh, change the blending mode to multiply, and this will give us a uh, a mix of these two maps. So if I take this one and drag to the opacity channel of this paint, we can see that we get these to, uh, to show through as well. And again, as before, you can go back, change the size, of the scratches and also adjust these uh, color to numbers, sliders to uh, make the scratches more visible or less visible, depending on your need. Cool, I think I, I like that quite a lot. So let's just zoom out a bit. Uh, if you hold down shift and drag, then you can uh, select more than one node. And yeah, well, let's just rearrange that to make everything look a bit more clear. And that's uh, actually all. We have now completed our graph and we have made this uh, scratched painted metal texture. I hope that you learned a few tricks along the way. Let me know if something was unclear or if there's something that you want to see more tutorials about. Until next time, take care.